Your commentator is Basil Risedale. June 21st, 1941. With treacherous assault, Germany declares war on Soviet Russia. Even before Hitler's proclamation had been spoken, Nazi bombers were taking toll of hundreds of innocents and untold numbers of homes and buildings. Moscow in three weeks was Hitler's promise to his then weary people, but he did not know the Russians. With lightning-like speed, the Red Army assembled and went into action. Its men and its tanks were ready, ready to fight the greatest defensive battle the world has ever known. Experts held little hope for Russia's resistance, but the Soviet answered with guns and prisoners. Prisoners amazed at the Red Army fury. Prisoners disillusioned and weary. Every man, woman, and child in Russia joined in the fight. In the Urals, women manned the munition factory machines, doing the work of their men who had left to face the foe. And they looked ahead, for Russian winters are bitter, and troops must keep on the move. Skis were cut, shaped, and made ready. Tanks reconditioned for more duty. Stalin, on November 7th in Red Square, Moscow, rallied his fighting troops. With the German army only 30 miles away, Russia's army was ready to deal with the treacherous enemy. From Red Square to the battlefront, that was the order of the day. The Russian winter had arrived, Russia's greatest ally, and all Russia was ready to fight. The Germans had been stopped and hurled back. They had lost their first great battles of the war. Skillful Russian gunnery and unending vigilance had stymied the German blitz. marksmen, these Soviet fighters, and here is evidence of their great skill in anti-aircraft fire. Russia's soldiers know that bitter winter warfare is just old-fashioned warfare. They understand camouflage. They have the will to fight. Here the fateful and incredible parallels of the Napoleonic campaign occurred. Here the Nazi spearhead that had taken Rostov and forced it to flee for safety was broken. Under cover of Russia's heavy artillery, the cavalry goes into action. With each new Nazi gain, the Russians push them back, relentlessly, irresistibly. The indomitable Soviet cavalry fighters harass the enemy everywhere.
while the Luftwaffe is grounded, the Soviet Air Force, manned by skilled fighter pilots, joins the great defensive. Men trained to fight to the last. Men who can stand the bitter winds and biting cold. Soviet airmen, skilled and fearless, ready and willing to give their all to knock out the enemy. German tank road is sighted, but it soon will be a useless jumble of shell holes and blasted terrain. Now, before an electrified world, Russia in full fury launches its offensive. The retreating Nazis are wounded, harassed, and scattered over a thousand mile front. Despite the Arctic cold, the Red Army employs its great 52 ton assault tanks. Each monster mounting in its turret, a heavy four inch gun, a machine gun, and smaller arms. This offensive was not according to the Nazi plan. Russia was prepared, prepared to meet the threat and tear it to beaten bits. Many villages are devastated, but in the evacuation of German troops, in the great battles that rage to and fro, the Nazis leave behind a mass of material that they would have dearly loved to reclaim had not the Soviet taken charge. Prisoners ill-clad for 30 degrees below zero, hungry, frozen. Hitler's dream of winter in Moscow is smashed. Forlorn and bewildered, Captured Nazi troops now await the command of their victors. The battle will go on, and history must record that the Nazis' first defeat came when Russia stopped Hitler in the winter of 1941.